What's going on guys? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next video. I'm now going to show you how to make a statement of cost of goods manufactured and a statement of cost of goods sold. And it's pretty much a continuation of the video before when I went over this flow chart here. If you didn't watch that video, highly recommend you do because pretty much all the concepts I covered there, I'm going to be using here. Now, the first thing I want to mention about a statement of cost of goods manufactured is that it looks at an interval of time over a period of time. So if you remember from financial accounting, an income statement, it looked over a period of time. So you had like for the month ended or for the year ended, while a balance sheet only looked at a specific point in time, right? So the statement of cost of goods manufactured is very similar to an income statement in that way. It looks over a period of time. So you're always going to see for the month ended or for the year ended, it's going to be for a period of time. So the first thing with a statement of cost of goods manufactured is you're going to have your direct materials, right? So we're pretty much going to be going down this flow chart over here. So starting with this now, Sometimes direct materials will be shown in a statement of cost of goods manufactured as a single sum, right? As a single amount. However, lots of times it's going to show the calculation of how to get that. And so basically to get this direct materials, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rearrange this formula. So we would bring this negative DM over to the right side. And then this ending raw materials, we'd bring over to the left. So basically we would have the raw materials, the beginning raw materials. So we'd have raw materials beginning and this beginning over here, that's going to be some kind of date, usually the first date of the period that you are looking at. And then what you're going to have is you're going to be adding purchases. So you'll have plus purchases. And then remember, we brought this ending raw materials over. So it became a negative. So we're going to be subtracting. So it's going to be less the raw materials at the end. Right. And that's going to be a date as well. It's going to be the date at the end of the period that you're looking at. So you're going to have these three amounts over here. And then when you net all of these out, basically you're going to get your direct materials as a final amount, basically this amount here, sometimes it's going to call, uh, be called direct materials used. Right. So that'll be like right there that this amount over here, it's going to be these amounts netted out. And so we have our direct materials. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write out all of the product costs. So we have the direct materials, then we're going to write out the direct labor, right? That's usually just going to be one single amount. So you would write that amount right there. And then you're going to write out the manufacturing overhead. So notice we're not putting the beginning work in process, right? We're starting off with these three items first in this next equation. So we'll have the manufacturing overhead. Now, lots of times this manufacturing overhead, it's actually going to have multiple components to it, like sort of like direct materials over here, how they had its own section. Basically, you're going to have like indirect labor, indirect materials, maybe the utilities on the factory, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of times you'll have this list over here and then that list will sum up to a certain number. But for now, I'm just going to put that number over here as is, right? So notice that all three of these things here added up are these three things in this formula. Now this is a statement of cost of goods manufactured. So this amount over here, it basically has to be the ending amount. That's what we're trying to get to. So what you do at this point on the statement is we're going to bring this over to the right, right? This negative COGM negative cost of goods manufactured goes over to the right, becomes positive cost of goods manufactured. So now it's isolated. 
and we bring the ending work in process over to the left. So on top of these three things here, we're going to be adding, so we're going to do plus, um, work in process. And that's going to be the work in process at the beginning of the period. So that's going to be a date there as well. So whenever you see this beginning and beginning, those are usually going to just be dates, depending on what you are looking at, whether that's the beginning of a year, beginning of a month, whatever period of time you're looking at. So we're going to be adding that work in process at the beginning to these three things. So that's going to be here. And then we're going to be subtracting the work in process at the end, right? Because we brought this over, it becomes a negative number. And now notice that these five items, when you net them out, it's basically these three, right? Direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, plus beginning work in process, minus ending work in process. When you net all of those out, we isolate it for the cost of goods manufactured. So our final amount, cost of goods manufactured. And you'll have that amount right there. Right, so that's pretty much how the statement of cost of goods manufactured is organized. And again, it's basically just taking these formulas that I went over in the flow chart in a previous video and just rearranging them, right? And just the heads up that this manufacturing overhead, a lot of times it's gonna actually show the list of the specific items that are in manufacturing overhead. So the statement can be actually longer. And a lot of times they may not even show this part for the direct materials. They might just show the direct materials used, but a lot of times they're showing this part, so thought I would add it in as well. Right, so you're pretty much just using these two formulas, uh, rearranging stuff, and then getting that cost of goods manufactured at the end. Okay, now what about the uh, cost of goods sold statement? So cost of goods sold, notice that in the flow chart, it's where? It's over here, right? So we're pretty much just gonna be using this formula over here. So we got cost of goods sold, statement of cost of goods sold. Now the statement of cost of goods sold, like the statement of cost of goods manufactured, like the income statement, it's over a period of time. So you're gonna see for the year ended or for the month ended, depending on what period of time you are looking at. So the statement of cost of goods sold, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the negative cost of goods sold over to the right side in this formula and bring the ending finished goods over to the left. And so what happens is you actually start off with the cost of goods manufactured, right? So that comes from the statement of cost of goods manufactured. So that statement comes first. And then from that statement, we write the cost of goods manufactured first, right? So we got that amount right there. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding this finished goods at the beginning over here, right? So we're pretty much adding these two things. So we're going to plus the finished goods at the beginning, and that's going to be a date right there. So we're gonna have that amount. And then a lot of times they'll actually net out these two first and they'll call it goods available for sale. So if you remember when I described the uh, flow chart, I mentioned that these two items, it's like what you're gonna have on stock, on shelf, right, to sell to customers, right? So that's your cost of goods available for sale, these two items here added. So you're gonna have a number right there. And then from that number, from these two added, we're gonna be subtracting the ending finished goods, right? Because we're bringing this over, it becomes a negative. So we're gonna have less the finished goods 
and that's at the end, right? So we're taking away that amount. And then when we net all of that out, we end up having our cost of goods sold. And that would be the amount right there. And then this amount, cost of goods sold, that would go right on the income statement. Right, so both statements, statement of cost of goods manufactured, statement of cost of goods sold, it's basically these formulas rearranged. And in the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do an example with numbers, actual numbers, an actual scenario, where we have to create these statements and an income statement on top of that.